Okay, well, we're going to get started with the next presentation. Uh, the next presenting company is uh, Parex Resources. Parex is a publicly traded Canadian company listed on the TSE and is now the largest independent EMP in Colombia, focused on delivering sustainable conventional oil, uh, oil and gas production. Uh, here to present their story is Mike Crookston, Senior VP of Capital Market and Corporate Planning. And so I'll turn it over to Mike. Thank you very much, Eric. Uh, thanks for coming to listen to the story. Uh, Parks Resources is Canadian headquartered. We're, we have our office and I'll say senior management in Calgary. And then we have a very large presence in Bogota where we have 100% of our operations. We've been doing, we've been part of, I guess, operating in, in Columbia. We entered in 2008 in an original bid round. And we've really grown this organically uh, from exploration all the way up into where we are today about a three billion dollar company with uh, over 50,000 barrels a day uh, of production. As Eric said you know we are the largest independent company in Colombia um, and I think what's different about Parx is now that we've matured we have very deep development near field um, appraisal uh, asset portfolio that we want to complement with our exposure to transformational exploration. And, you know, we, we had a dinner last night and we were talking about, you know, what is the risk reward? And, you know, there's challenges throughout our industry no matter what jurisdiction you're in. And we feel after being in Columbia for the last 15 years, we have a really good handle on, on what the challenges are there. And there's just somewhat of a, a moat around Columbia for the existing producers. And I think that really gives us a competitive advantage, especially how we work with the communities and how we work with the, the key players like Echo Patrol. So, you know, we've been operating debt free since around 2015. And, you know, that was really helpful as we went through COVID uh, kind of phase where we were able to use our balance sheet to buy back shares. And you know, we really reduce our, our share count and remain debt free through that. And you know, the last thing is, we're a conventional oil and gas producer. Uh, Columbia does not allow for fracking. So what that does is actually enables us uh, to be a really top tier ESG, and you know, that top tier when it comes to greenhouse gas emissions, but also in the social and I think the governance. So being located in Canada with the TSX. I think we have very uh, progressive uh, governance structure and, that, and we can complement that with being in, in an emerging market with the opportunity set. Um, as I said, you know, our market cap is about 3 billion Canadian. Uh, we pay a, about a, now it's about a 6% yield, $1.50 a share. And we have over 5.5 million acres of land in Columbia, which is really a long runway for, for development. So as we go through, we'll talk about some other numbers. Generally, we do everything in US dollars except for our share price and the dividend. Now, just a little bit of background on Columbia. You know, why we like it as, you know, being a call it an emerging market, even though it is an OECD member, it does have a strong established uh, energy industry. The oil production is around 750,000 barrels a day. Uh, there's no capital controls. We move money freely in and out. All of our, our oil and gas sales are actually offshore, paid, and then we sweep the money in without any uh, obstacles to that. Um, and, you know, it does give you the opportunity to have some of the highest netbacks um, in, in the oil business. You know, our, our Operating net back last quarter at, at the first half of the year, Brent averaged exactly $80, which is kind of nice for planning purposes. We had an operating net back of $44 US and a cash net back of 33. And you know that really enables us to have a high cash flow business where we can return capital to shareholders. And lastly, as we look at our growth and where the new opportunities come from. I think a key differentiator for us is the ability to partner with Echo Patrol. They're the state company. They're 90% owned by the state, 10% uh, floated. And they have a very established base. But we offer 
numerous advantages to partner with them where we can be the operator and really advance some of these projects that I think can be meaningful to our overall growth as we go forward. You know, I'm sure a lot of companies at this conference, we talk about the future a lot. And I think it's very important for us to also be anchored. What have we done so far? And we started the company in 2008, but here's just uh, basically six years of, you know, results where we're very focused on production per share. And it's really the double compounding impact by growing absolute numbers and reducing your share count at the same time. And we've done this debt free. Um, so this gives you an idea of, you know, the, the CAGR of 16 or 18% when it comes from production, that's given us our cash flow and then our reserves at the same time. So we're very focused on both of those aspects, respecting the shareholder, doing it on a production, on a per share basis, and then also on absolute numbers of growing the business. What we have on the left is the return of capital. Um, you can see since 2018, the, in the green bars, those are share repurchases. This is in Canadian dollars. And then 2021, uh, just kind of midway through the end of COVID there, we started to have implement a dividend. And we did that because of the confidence we had in the existing asset base. And we've grown the dividend from 50 cents a year, a year annual basis to $1.50, and much more of an even split as we look into the return of capital to shareholders. So we'll, we'll be um, doing probably about 340, 330 million dollars of, of return to capital this year. What's critical then is, you know, the ability to actually grow your dividend is with also having a reduced share count. Um, we've really reduced our share count from 164 million down to 110 at the end of last year. We're about 105 million shares today and we'll continue to reduce that throughout the year. So when we think about return of capital to shareholders and you know, that track record, we've put out a target of really returning one third of our cash flow, our funds flow from operations to shareholders. We're doing it now pretty well equal at $80 oil. We do it pretty well equal with our, our dividend and our share buybacks. And really using the share buybacks is that lever if we have, I'll say, extra high prices, something above $80. $80. And you know, what we've done also, we, we started off with about $300 million of extra cash on our balance sheet. You know, in the first half of this year, we've actually returned $120 million to shareholders, um, which is against having about $80 million of free, free funds flow. So we're using our balance sheet to actually return more cash to the shareholders, even though we have a very robust capital program and growing in the future. For 2023, just a snapshot of the activity that we're trying to accomplish. Um, our production's going to be 54 to 57,000 a day. That's 99% oil. Uh, the oil we produce in general averages about 21 API and we get about a three to four dollar discount uh, to Brent on that price as we sell it. We're really diversified across numerous basins uh, within Colombia and you know we, we think there's lots of opportunities to have that diversification in Colombia with that. And I think what's a little bit different also um, is you know our, our funds flow were about over 700 million dollars this year CapEx about 400, 450 to 475. And you know, it's a mix of development programs and also large exploration. We put out a three year plan late last year. And I, what we really do wanna do with this, this program is just to show uh, our base. And the gray is really the base of discovered oil. That's gonna be our free cash flow. And we've really, invested into this base in the last couple of years, water flood and other secondary recovery, that our capital is really decreasing in that area. It's gonna give us the free cash flow. And then in the green and the yellow, that's really our growth as we look for the next couple of years. And th those areas tend to have very high deliverability, very strong capital efficiency. And that's the reason why we, we're forecasting our capital to go down over the next couple of years 
against a growing production base. And that's really going to increase our free funds flow that we'll be able to return to our shareholders. Now, I think the differentiator uh, with Parx and Columbia is our exposure to large transformational exploration. You know, we have a, a strong portfolio, which we want to, you know, I guess, drill about three of these discoveries, or three of these exploration, hopefully they turn into discoveries, large E prospects, uh, in a year, um, and you know, we kind of ca characterize large, big E uh, prospects as being able to deliver more than 20,000 barrels a day. And that's material when you're just over 50,000 barrels a day currently. That's why we like the risk reward. It's all onshore and it's all conventional. Just an example of one that we're going to start to, we're going to spud here in about a month. It's called Ar Arauca. It's in the northern Llanos, which is, if you have some idea, the Llanos is a big basin that kind of turns into Venezuela. Uh, this is about 50, 70 kilometers away from a, a monster field called Canon Limon that Oxy had. It's produced over a billion barrels of oil. And this is a partnership with Echo Patrol. It's been land, a block that's been foul for about 20 years, and we're going in to redevelop it. And one of the prospects there um, is called the Rauka 8, and we're going to be spudding that uh, hopefully by the end of September. And that, that can really be a step change for us um, in, our, in our overall resources. Another thing that I think is a key differentiator is our relationship with Echo Patrol. Um, what we're doing with Echo Patrol is pooling a number of blocks together in an MOU where it's, it's in the foothills. Um, there's been very large discoveries in this area in the early 90s by BP and this Cusiana, Cupiagua, where you know, they were producing 400,000 barrels a day of liquids and re-injecting a BC and a half, BC, 1.5 BCF a day too. So we're going to follow this trend. Uh, there just hasn't been any exploration in this area in the last 15 years. And we'll work with Echo Patrol. Us, we're the operator, they'll leverage our expertise in the, in the foothills, some of the learnings that we've taken out of the Canadian foothills. And then we'll be able to also work with Echo Patrol in their land position and their infrastructure to really accelerate the development. Uh, lastly, just on ESG, we're very proud that you know, we, we're having excellent ratings. A lot of it has to do with how we work with communities, the governance that we, we have as a TSX company and just the conventional oil aspect, reducing that over time. So just takeaways, we're actually a multi-basin company within Columbia, 100% focused in Columbia. We're headquartered in, in Calgary. Um, you know, we're investing to really flatten the decline, improve our capital uh, efficiency over time, and we're able to give our investors exposure to outsized returns. We have a very strong base business that's providing our dividend, our share buybacks, and with about 10 to 15% of our overall um, funds flow, we're able to expose our investors to step change exploration opportunities. And we can do that while still returning 100% of our funds flow, which is about a third of our overall cash flow to shareholders every year. Anyways, if you have any comments, uh, we're happy to talk to you afterwards. Um, my name is Mike Crookton. I'm also with Steve Irek, an associate here. Thank you very much.